Hey guys, Sean here at Vocal Performance. We're gonna talk about something that I'm going through myself, and it's a rib dislocation or rib subluxation. So uh, last week, I was doing a workout that had a lot of cleaning, cleaning jerks in it for time, and they're pretty heavy cleaning jerks for me. So I'm going through it, and I'm not gonna lie, I get into the reps, start getting fatigued, my form probably gives out a little bit, and I'm racing someone else, and sure enough, I'm going and I hear a big, I feel it, and I hear a big pop. I'm right in my back, and I knew immediately something was wrong, but I kept on going through it. I finished the workout. A one, you're saying? Anyways, finished the workout, and um, after the workout, I felt okay. I uh, didn't feel great. The next day, I didn't do anything to help my rib. I just kind of kept going, and sure enough, it got so bad that I really couldn't work out with it. So starting that day, I started doing my own rehab. Originally, it was my left side. Um, it's, somewhere, it's somewhere around the rib that's going to be articulating with T5, T6, maybe T4, T5 in that area, and it feels like a big pinch. Um, a lot of the takeaways, a lot of people think when they have maybe a rib subluxation or a costo vertebral joint subluxation, that's the rib to the vertebrae itself. Um, when you have that, it may feel like it's a shoulder issue because sometimes that can refer into the armpit a little bit, um, but you'll have some telltale symptoms. So things like Passively moving has the same feel that it would in active moving. Active movement may hurt a little bit more, but passive is going to feel it because it's anatomy. You literally have a rib that has shifted and it's off its plane, it's outside of its joint, so you're going to feel that kind of wherever you move or however you move. Um, breathing, take big deep breath, I feel a pinch back there, right in that same area in the posterior back. I start. Take a deep breath in, and I feel that pinch. Um, and there's some other symptoms if you're if you're sneezing, sneezing is awful. Coughing is awful when you have a sublux rib because it's such a expansive and abra uh, just an abrasive rib movement whenever you cough or sneeze. Um, it's different than like a rotator cuff tear would be. It's gonna feel different. That's not gonna hurt as bad during coughing or sneezing. It may hurt a little bit. Let's talk about if you have this, you have a, a dislocated rib or a, or a subluxed rib something in that, that nature. These are some things that you can do to get out of it. I've been doing these things for about two or three days now, and I feel great. I could, if I needed to, I could probably hit a max clean jerk or max snatch right now. I'm not going to, because I'm being conservative with my treatment. I'm gonna continue to go through it and do what I'm doing. But I have, I'm, I'm fine to have full range of motion. It doesn't hurt me to move. Um, I, can, I can move like I need to, feel a very slight pinch, whereas before, it was a nightmare for me to try to get my arm up or try to open my chest up or even breathing was a nightmare. So now it's a lot better. Um, but what you can do, is first off, we're just gonna heat it up. Okay, we're gonna get on a bike. We're probably not gonna row if you're really acute. Um, even biking to a certain degree can hurt if you're really acute. So getting on the bike, doing just legs. I wouldn't recommend running with this because it's a lot of it's a lot of motion, it's a lot of jeering motion just on your thoracic cage, on your rib cage. So that may hurt a little bit. I would try to do something where you can heat it up where you're static. So uh, something like uh, like a bike. Um, Maybe maybe a gentle row could work, but something where you're not moving a whole lot, but you're still getting your blood flowing a ton. It's all about the blood flow. Get as much blood flow, heat your core temperature up, get those tissues ready to move and, ready to, and get the rib ready to move as well. So after we've been on the bike, after we've done that, we're gonna move into some manual mobility work, self-mobility work. So self-mobility work, we're talking about a little bit of foam roller, a little bit of lacrosse ball. Yeah, but first something like a rib, to where you actually have some anatomical issue happening, this can really do a lot to actually move the ribs. We want to get as much movement into the ribs we can while we're treating this. So with the foam roller, what we're going to do is we're going to get that foam roller, we're going to find that spot that's really bugging us, okay? So for me, that spot is about right here. So I'm not just relaxing over, we're going to do a little bit of movement here. But I'm here, I'm going to start off just trying to roll up and down and that spot that's getting me. So mine's more on the left side, so you can see me kind of shift my body more to the left side because I really want to move that area around and hopefully get that rib start moving back into its proper position. So I'm kind of moving through here, just rolling it on top of it. I'm fine with you actually caving here. You can collapse the spine a little bit, um, let the because we're just trying to get rib movement, trying to promote rib movement, okay? So here, moving in and out, try to spend about two minutes here. You can alternate days with the foam roller and move to a lacrosse ball. Lacrosse ball is going to give you a much more localized um, manual movement on that spot. So I'm going to find that same little spot that I've been whining about. So, oh yeah, so I'm going to get there. As soon as I find it, I can, I'm right on it right here. I can, I can really feel it. So initially, I'm not really going to move on it a whole lot, but I'm just going to breathe on it. So I'm up, I really got gravity working with me. Belly, ribs, chest.
right there at the end when I expand my chest, that's where I really feel it. So I'm just gonna breathe on top of this ball, try to get a good 10 to 15 breaths in, spend some time here. You can talk to some other people while you're doing it. And just really move on that. So after we've been on the bike, after we've got our heart rate up, got some blood flow, after we've been uh, hitting it with some soft tissue, some actual movement of the anatomy of the rib cage on the, on the vertebrae, on the spine. I'm gonna move into more mobility before we get active, before we get exercise. So for me, my, because my rib is around that T4, T5, T6 area, um, this is a good one for me, just trying to open this shoulder up. So I'm gonna wind my shoulder up, getting this capsule back up, and just really try to get this shoulder girdle to open up here. So I'm trying to get the shoulder girl to open up, move my hand in, move out. I start feeling more of a, way more of a pinch with that internal rotation, my head shooting through. So I'm gonna work here. Feel it less in external rotation. Oh, feel it more in internal rotation. So I'm really gonna bias that and try to get it to move. Now, I don't wanna feel massive amounts of pain here. Discomfort is okay. If I feel that slight pinch, it's okay. I'm working through it. A rib with this anatomy, you can really get someone to do some soft tissue to you. Maybe even have someone stand on the spot. I know it sounds crazy, but have someone stand on wherever spot you have and just breathe through that. It could help. So we're gonna get in here. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can open up there. You can put your hand on, the, on a rig or a doorway and really try to open that shoulder up, just around to open the shoulder up and where my rib is, I can feel it in this position. So I'm just gonna move in and out, trying to move around through this and get the rib to move, hunting around for a very restricted position. So we've gotten very mobile. You wanna do that for about one to two minutes each. And for the crossball foam roller, spend about two minutes on each of those as well. Um, so after we've got it moving, we got it mobile, we have to incorporate some sort of exercise, some sort of contraction to facilitate a, a learning from the mind to the rib that, hey, you did dislocate, we're moving you back into your proper position. Now we've got to hold you in that proper position, okay? So some of the exercises we're gonna do, we're gonna do a bottoms up kettlebell hold, okay? So I'm sitting here holding the kettlebell. I'm just gonna try to work it around bottoms up because I want that stability. I don't wanna lose any stability in my shoulders. I'm going through this. I'm just trying to open up here. We can get a little more dynamic, press overhead with the bottoms up position. Pressing over here, head, making sure we keep our core contracted, stabilized. Then we can move into some lunges from this overhead position. Okay, that's gonna give a more dynamic stance here. So boom, I'm lunging, trying to stabilize this kettlebell, not letting it collapse. I wanted to fall there. I'm trying to use the paramount of my rib. Okay, so we're using exercise to get into it. There's some other things you can do as well. You can, WYs and Ts aren't bad for anything. Just try to open that rib up. Open your thoracic cage up. Do some air, overhead air squats. Whatever you need, trying to get that rib to move, okay? And then of course, go into the movements that are hurting you. My movement was a cleaning jerk. I'm gonna get back on the cleaning jerk. If you've had a rib dislocation, oftentimes this front rack can be unbearable to get back to. Okay, so working your way into that hook gripped front rack position. If you can't hook grip it, then just try to get it down and start working through that. Throwing the elbow up, just working the restriction there. You can get some presses from here to make sure you can lock it down, okay? And they even get more dynamic as you go. But building back into the movement that caused the issue slowly, starting light, getting heavy, starting low reps, moving into higher rep schemes. Okay guys, this process is working for me pretty well. Um, like I said, it's been two or three days but I'm back to almost full capacity at this point with my rib. So if you guys have this issue, go through these steps, have any questions, hit me up. Um, but we're gonna keep on attacking the body. See y'all later.